Okay, I continue my <clears throat> interview with the mayor. Listen, we got to talk about, I know you're sick and tired of talking about it, we're going to ask you the question. Costco, Costco bar. Yep. Now you know there was a lot of people here, and sometimes not too often during console, uh, there was a little bit of uproar in the audience, and you know, you, mm -hmm. you won't tolerate that, you got to have some mm -hmm. discipline when you have a, a, a console, console meeting. Now when they made this presentation, not to put the bar, the gas bar at Costco. Now, was the decision made before they made the presentation? The people they made the presentation were concerned. The issue on the gas bar was not an issue during that presentation because that didn't require uh, permission of the council because it was outside of their area or outside of the, the designated wetland area and they moved it back far enough so they wouldn't have to be involved in that. So we we're really dealing with two separate issues. We weren't voting on whether or not to let a gas bar at that particular meeting. What do you say to people that say there's a lot of secretive action going on behind the, behind the scene before the issue comes up? to an open public meeting? Well, we have uh, a committee of council, uh, we have committees, and we have formal session of council. A lot of these things go to committee first or council committee. All of our committee meetings for the most part are open to the public, the press are there. Uh, there are no decisions made uh, privately. They're all done in an open formal session of council. Uh, deliberations on many things take place, uh, of course, without uh, you there or anybody else there. And uh, we try as best we can to keep as much as we can in, uh, in public session so people can be a part of it. you got to admire people like Heather, the Irving, Irving reporter. I like Heather. I mean, yeah. you got to admire her to stay there and listen to all this BS, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, I, I find the media in this town uh, uh, to be quite good, uh, I think responsible. Uh, you know, if we get out of line, uh, we're fair game like anybody else, and I accept that. So we try not to get out of line as much as we could. Uh, so they have a job to do, and I think they do it quite well, and they do it in a, in a fair and balanced way. I've never really had a problem with the media. Now, I've, I've been hit a few times by them, but. That's uh, that's uh, part of the job. What do you think of the media now with the media 20 years ago? Well, uh, you know, with social networking and with technology, uh, everything is instant now. Uh, so it has changed the face of media. Uh, on Twitter, for example. I was going to get to that. I find out uh, about an accident or a fire before the media does because it, somebody will see it and, and Twitter it. So it's it's pretty instant information. Uh, and besides that, I get the Gleaner, I get, uh, you know, CNN, I get everything uh, pretty well instantly now. So, mm. it has changed. We need a radio station, radio talk show station. Mm -hmm. We need that in this province. We don't have it. Well, we get Tom Young and St. John. I mean, what? You listen to 15 minutes of Tom Young on one issue. I mean, really good talk shows. Well, I think he's on for a couple of hours. Yeah, but he's from uh, news from Nova Scotia, or just. Oh no, he doesn't. No, I like Tom. Yeah. You like Tom? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. He, you know, like he he chooses the issue of the day. You really have an open show. You can talk about. Yeah, I don't anything. know if he has open shows. I, you know, he calls me every once in a while. I got his program talking about issues, and they're you know usually New Brunswick issues and Fredericton issues. But uh, no, I've always thought he does a pretty good job. Media has changed. No question about it. Okay.